Good, y'all. I'm on the exchange, and welcome to the exchange rate. A show that begs the question is that a wallet in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Forrest Corn, seven years ago, aka in January, I was once the crown jewel of this talk show, but on account of a world tour, a bitch was booked. <laughs> mm -hmm. In my absence, we had a panel on love and sex, a cracker, and dare I speak its ugly name, the moderately funny Slob the Meth Thing was here. Slob, also affectionately known as Bob, <laughs> threw a lot of jabs throughout his episode. And I'm not gonna lie, it hurt. It hurt a lot of bit. It was almost as painful as watching that fucking face across my phone for 36 minutes. He also tried to check me with the money puns. So in response, I'm gonna talk him down in my own way with a motherfucking rap. Here we go. <laughs> That's how I wore this hair. I wanted to feel the vibe, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Me, me, me. All right. Exchange rate coming at you live on the prime time. Lyrics flowing at your easy bitch, I'm sublime. Rupee slips on your tips, Glenda Coastine. Pound the twink in the stink, all oh, these is high crimes. The scoot away in a minute, bring the dong, I'm gonna win it, cause your purse has reached its limits. Silly rabbit tricks are kiddish. Eyebrows wide and no cologne. Natural de yodi yon. Cameras on, bitch, I'm on. Tell a friend that I'm the one. Realness, I'm blessed. Oh, honey. Shave the hairs off your chest, you funny. Lyrically, I'm the best. She litty. No stress, muzzle next. Smack silly, if I'm frank, you are done. Hate to do this to you, son. Young De Niro, bitch, bada boom. Got an incredible show for you today. Black History Month may have ended last week, but I wasn't here, so I'm here to announce that Black History Month will be extended for one more week for all the white people out there. <laughs> Think of it as a leap week instead of just today. As always, we have the wonderful DJ David Serrano on the ones and twos. And we've got Miss Love and Hip Hop Yandy Smith in the house. <laughs> so I think it's that time to get into the gig. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> Rihanna could never. <laughs> because I heard my cocktail is really strong, so I wanna. <sighs> um, so listen, so yesterday, breaking news hit the motherfucking internet about one of the season 12 girls, Miss Sherry Pie. Have you heard about this yet? Oh, he's, oh, she's a Reddit user. We found the one. There she is. <laughs> Girl, there were a lot of allegedly is walking around. I'm going to alleged my ass all the way around this until we get some more details. Then, we, then we're going to come at you next week with the slow verse. But it's crazy. Lots of catfishing. Some, and allegedly this all happened while she was in college. And it also happened like as early as last year. Um, and she just know that Miss Thing has been up to some shady behavior, allegedly. And uh, when we get more information, we'll give you the full scoop. But Allison, um, we're waiting to hear from you, David Serrano. <laughs> Do you know? Nothing goes with pie like hot tea, so. Hello. <laughs> That's, yes, agreed. Oh, I'm sure y'all are all going to read it. Now, now, don't close this browser. Like we always say, just click the new tab and watch it over there, because we're going to talk about some more other shit, like Megan Thee Stallion. Are we Megan Thee Stallion fans here? <laughs> So if you don't know Megan Thee Stallion, she was, she, she, she was really popular this past year with her um, summer hit, Hot Girl Summer, and it was everywhere. I mean, it was everywhere. I thought it was gonna be, the, people say it wasn't the song of the summer, they're giving it to Lizzo, uh, 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 Truth Hurts, but I think it, it was kind of Megan too, because Megan's song was everywhere, in America. Um, but uh, she wanted to renegotiate her contract with her agency that she signed when she was 20 years old. If, is, is anyone out here uh, a musician or artist trying to, trying to break in, anybody? Yeah, a few people. So, like, when you get, when, if an agency is calling you, like, we want to sign you, you probably drop everything. You're like, oh, this major label wants to sign me? Yes, I'll do whatever you want. So she signed this contract when she was 20. She's 25 years old now. Sidebar, she's like 5'11". Did you know that? 
Bitch, I'm 5'11". That's why she's called a stallion. I, <laughs> no, that's not, even a, that's not even a joke. No, really, yeah. Is that why they call her yeah, a stallion? She's tall. She's big. Right yeah, she, she, we're like me, Megan, this, Megan the Stallion and Monet Exchange are the same height. Now, I don't know about size. She, obviously, I mean, I think I look like that, I would like to say. <laughs> when I'm on stage, I think I look like that. Would you guys agree? Yeah. She, oh, you want to see this one right here? He was like, mm. <laughs> I, I think I'll compare it to that, which is a very cute outfit. I would look very cute in that outfit. But um, yeah, so she's saying that she didn't know, like literally, like all the verbiage in her in her contract. Like she didn't know exactly what it said. But again, she jumped at the opportunity to sign with a major label. Um, go back up to the quote, Bridget. I want to see. I want to read it. So if y'all don't know, Bridget is the girl in my head. She's talked to me in my little earpiece. Here we go. Here's the quote. I didn't understand some of the verbiage in the at the time, and now I do. I just want it corrected. So she was saying that they were like preventing her from like releasing music. They want they they didn't want to put her, put to put out any more albums. Which obviously, bitch, you want to strike while the iron is hot. You're not trying to wait five years later try to come out with a single, Iggy Azalea, and no one care about it. That's not shit. Bitch, she came out with a whole album. Y'all, did y'all know she had an album out recently? Exactly. Have the audience of that girl, Iggy Who. So uh, she, Megan doesn't want that to happen to her. So she wants to like do more stuff. And she she did a whole Instagram live about it, which people, y'all know Instagram live has gotten Cardi in a lot of trouble, and which I'm sure now they're gonna pull this video, show it in court, like, uh huh. So let's show the video really quick, so they can use it in court. Well, everybody cool. We all family. It's cool. It's nice. Let me just ask them to renegotiate my contract. <laughs> Soon as I said, I want to renegotiate my contract, everything went left. Like, it just all went bad, it all went left. So now they're telling the bitch that the, she can't drop no music. Doesn't she look like she's at some like outdoor cafe just having lunch? <laughs> Imagine walking down 7th Avenue and you see Megan Thee Stallion with the only Whoville updo <laughs> talking about her contract. They were like, is that Bird is that girl? Especially in New York, you, I see shit like that all the time. You're like, is that Omarion? Okay. Uh, what do you think, David? Well, I think she pointed to the right when she said everything went left. Well, but. that's because, because that's, <laughs> no, that's the Instagram be getting you because it be mirroring you. You don't oh, be okay, knowing. Okay, 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 uh -huh. okay. Well, um, as someone with a lot of followers, I know that. I, you know, I feel bad. You know, a lot of these young artists, that, that stuff happens all the time. Apparently, yeah. though, a judge at least agrees with it right now because they got a temporary restraining order against the um, label which is crazy, and the CEO, from keeping them from releasing music. I heard about this, and like the, the restraining order is in Megan's favor. It's like, yeah. it's like the restraining order is saying that you cannot stop me from doing this stuff right now until we go to litigation. After litigation, it'll probably change, but the restraining order is for her, saying like, I can still put on music, I can still do all this stuff, and you can't stop me. Because I always feel like restraining orders were like, for distance, yeah, like stopping. It, yeah, like stopping someone from like stalking you. But uh, this is a cute outfit as well. I would wear that, except... <laughs> This beating looks a little cheap. I'm not gonna lie. This is some very uh, She's gonna get a restraining order against you. Shit, you know, <laughs> I'm kidding. I love her. She was she was the best part of the fucking episode, right? That is so good. And a lot, a lot of celebrities have come out endorsing Megan, like JoJo, and a lot of people like free the hash, hashtag free the stallion, which I fucking that is such a good hashtag. Is I was trending on Twitter, and um, of course everyone's gonna side with her, and hopefully they get it resolved, and she can give us some more fierce summer bangers. Amen. Something like that happened to JoJo. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Ah. Uh, Speaking of influencers and summer bangers, Russia. <laughs> <laughs> this young lady um, at Dedenko Katerina was recently celebrating her, her 29th birthday. She's a very popular influencer from Russia. She has 1.6 million followers. And um, she made headlines because as like a stunt at her party, she put a bunch of dry ice in her pool and people proceeded to jump into the pool with the dry ice and three people died. I know, that is the, like who thinks, I mean, I've seen videos of people putting it in water because it makes like a cool effect. It makes like the whole thing fog and bubbling. It looks really cool. But I mean, I would never be in my mind, oh, there's dry ice. I'm going to jump in the water and like live my life. Like what in the white people is going on here? You're going to live your life. Okay, like the caucasity is real. All right, honey. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't know, this is what dry, dry ice, if you ever got blue apron or, it's a little thing that comes in your little blue apron to keep it cold, because it really, it's really cold. But dry ice like oxidizes your body, it takes all the oxygen out of your body, so these people like, they were like Probably fucked as soon as they in inhaled, in, like ingested the water. Would you ever jump in dry ice, David? Does that sound fun to you? Not now. 
<laughs> not now, I know. Uh, no, it's just crazy because someone said that she was a scientist. Yeah, she, she would yeah, know yes, better. She's, she, she's a scientist. Yeah, like, which, should... okay, so you're like an Instagram model and a scientist. Okay, cute. But you would know better. <laughs> I know, and David and I, we have hypothesized because her husband was one of the people that died. And we, I it's mean, the, I'm not saying no names. behavior right um, there. Hashtag allegedly, but it's a little suspicious that the chemist doesn't know yeah, about dry, dry ice, ice and speak. water mm -hmm. and the effects on someone's body. So speaking of, my husband speaks Russian because he's from, he's Ukrainian. He's from David, Kansas. every episode you I have I gotta say my husband. You, you get a like husband. a little, a little like bell when I say it. Uh, so anyway, he said when he watched the video that she was filming at the time. She's like, oh, my husband just jumped in the water, but I haven't, he's not coming back up. I think he died as a joke. Oh. Yeah, well, <laughs> my God. I guess she was right. This so. is too much. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, speaking of deadbeat husbands. Oh, that, <laughs> oh my God. I don't mean it like that. Oh, God. You guys just witnessed the moment I got canceled again online. <laughs> Um, Stedman, Oprah's husband, um, <laughs> came to her aid when she had a very unfortunate incident at um, her, uh, uh, she, Oprah's doing this, uh, this panel, this, what is tour. it? Tour, it's a tour, 2020 Vision Tour. Yeah, 2020 Vision Tour, where she's like enlightening the world. I mean, we all know Oprah is the leader of the free fucking world, okay? If Oprah walked in here right now, we would all be cute to fucking bow, <laughs> all right, and grovel at her feet. But uh, she recently had a little stumble, for lack of a better word, at her Vision Tour. Take a look at the video. Is that you have to name it to claim it. So here's my definition of what wellness means. It's all white, my of definition, course. definition, not yours, just an idea. And the halo. You're going to be <laughs> defining it for yourself. Wellness to me means all things in balance. And balance doesn't mean all things are equal or at peace at all times. Oh. Wrong shoes. That was a hard fall, all right? Also, the irony that she's talking about balance. <laughs> <laughs> And I've watched this video 45 times <laughs> on slow-mo, and I can't for the life of, of me figure out what trips her up. Like, she's literally just walk, Look at that. Like, that thing is caught. She's just... Like, what just uh, happened? Apparently, like 50 ankle. Cent has some ideas. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like a lack of calcium or something. I don't know what happened. <laughs> and then she, blamed, she fell on the floor. She's like, oh, my shoes. I'm like, bitch, your shoes didn't do it. You did it, all right? <laughs> But um, and, and but she she had a laugh about it on Twitter. She was like, you know what, I fell. She was like, sometimes we fall and we don't mean to. And she's like, that's what happened to me. I didn't think anything of it until it became a meme. Um, so, oh my God, stop playing this video. This is too much. That was, that was a we hard cannot fall. mock Mama Oprah in this. Uh, now the show gonna get canceled. Great. <laughs> Oprah's like, cease. Just push, push the lever. I just, I just disappear from existence. Anyway, um, but my issue. <laughs> <laughs> all of this was with Snoop Dogg and 50 Cent. Now, if you don't know, Snoop Dogg recently took Gail King to task and he called her all out, all out her name on some nasty, trifling stuff. Um, and so Snoop Dogg doesn't like Gail King uh, right now because of her interview with Lisa Leslie about Kobe Bryant and the rape allegations. And um, so Oprah is guilty by osmosis, by association. And then 50 Cent thinks that Oprah is a detriment to black men. He was like, you only prosecute black men when they have rape allegations. You don't, you, you don't go after like the Harvey Weinsteins. And uh, what's the guy from Good Morning America that got Matt Lauer. Matt Lauer? He's like, you only go after the black men. So when this video surfaced on the video, 50 Cent commented, what the fuck happened here? Michael Jackson's ghost strip her? And then Snoop Dogg chimed in under him, was like, Michael and Kobe blew a gust of wind. Breath emoji balance. I mean, I just, I mean, that is too much. And not 19,000 likes, that is crazy. <laughs> so, I mean, Snoop Dogg has, and Snoop Dogg went on the Red Table Talk with Jada Pink and he apologized for calling black women out their name and being so nasty to Gail. And then to cut away to a few days later posting this, it's like, you're not really sorry. You just wanted to, us to think you're sorry because you're still obviously mad about it and being so nasty. I'm like, where was Stedman in all of this? Which was the, which was the transition <laughs> for the story. Where was Stedman? Why was Stedman there? Uh, he was hanging out with Gail, I guess, in the green room. I don't know. Ah! Uh, Gail, did you, did you see the video of, of Oprah? Someone asked, right, right after the whole Gail thing happened, someone went to Oprah, they were like, she was in an interview, they were like, how's Gail? And Oprah was like, she's not well. And she like started like <laughs> sobbing online. Oh. And they're like real friends. That, they is, are some, very close. that is some Baba Monet shit, okay? Are you that close? 
I know. <laughs> I think Bob wouldn't cry though. <laughs> like not even a little bit. I th- I would like to think I'm the Oprah and Bob's the Gale. Okay. Like the little less, <laughs> the little lesser successful friend, you know. Oh. So yeah, but I mean, Oprah is fine. She made she made fun of it. My qualm is with uh, Snoop Dogg and Fifty Cent for being so nasty to these amazingly powerful women who have really, they have, Oprah and Gail have changed the game for women in daytime, and black women in TV, so they deserve a round of applause. And I'm, Oprah, get well soon, mama. Death drop. Yeah, Benadryl. <laughs> she did a death drop. <laughs> oh my God, David. <laughs> That's a good one, I like that. Oh, speaking of death drops, Apple wish they could death drop right now. Oh, hey. Because, okay, how many of y'all in here have an iPhone? Literally every single person except the shady one over here. Are you, are you an Android user? Are you proud of yourself? You shouldn't be. <laughs> um, so it's been, I've, it's all, it's, it is a known fact to me that in like, especially the iPhone like four, five, six territory, every time the new phone would come out, yours would just cease to exist, stop working, and just be literally a shell of a phone. Like, my phone was literally flying two days ago, the new one came out and mine doesn't work. So I've always been suspicious that they've been doing some shady shit under the scenes, and they just um, agreed to a settlement of $500 million um, (laughs) for anyone who had the iPhone 6, 6S, 7S. If you you purchased your phone, I think before December 2017, something like that, you can uh, walk into the Apple and get your money. now, don't think you're about to buy a home, okay? It is literally $500 million. They're estimated about 5 million people, which equals $500 million. So if everyone in here was to go to iPhone right now, we each get $25. I mean, that's like a Metro car for a couple of days, at least. And I'm, I don't care. I'm I literally, after the show, I'm walking to Apple, and I'm going to get my money. Who's, is, are y'all with me? Yeah. We're going to storm Apple together. Yeah. Um, there's about, what, 40 of us in here? We're going we gonna to get our motherfucking money. Do you have an iPhone, David? I have one now, but yeah, I had two, me and my... Oh, one. I had the 6, 6S, <laughs> no. 7, and it's, I had all four of the phones they're talking about. That's for $100, baby. Yeah, hey. And I want my check tonight. I don't want to wait for Tim Cook or whoever to send my money. I want my check tonight. <laughs> And with interest. With interest. Oh, yeah, pain and suffering. So add another $100. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, that's all the stories today. Yay! <sighs> so, this latest season of Drag Race is off to a shady start. Here to spill all the tea is season 12 contestant Britta in the exchange rate's newest segment, Britta Unfiltered. Oh, yeah, don't make a mess. Hello, my name is Britta. Welcome to Britta Unfiltered. Here I'm going to spill all the tea, all the water, all the liquid about season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race. (laughs) Let's get into it. Here we go. We're gonna start with these workroom entrances. Now they save the best for first, bitch. That's right. My ass comes walking up into that gig. I love my liquids, and I took a little sip of that cocktail and it spilt a little on the floor. But good thing they sent someone to clean up after me. Thanks, Monet. So I mentioned that I am a Polynesian woman. My dad is from the kingdom of Tonga. But what you don't know, sis, is that my mom is a small, little, cute, white woman with red hair. She's very attractive. It's where I get all my good looks from. Thanks, mama. I love you so much. I'll try to say bitch less. Up next into the workroom, mama, it is my girl, Miss Nikki Doll. She comes right into the workroom, and she's looking like a baguette. And that's what I call baby gays. Hey, little baguette. <laughs> That's horrible, I know, I'm gonna, gonna, you know. Up next, we have Widow Von Du. Yes, Widow, I have nothing bad to say about Widow, but I feel like she would sneak into my house and kill me in my sleep. I love you so much, sis. <laughs> Jackie Cox is coming through the workroom looking like a Persian Minnie Mouse. I guess they lift the travel ban on that one. <laughs> We have Heidi coming through the workroom. She's making a sound that sounds like a tea kettle. Her tongue is moving in a very interesting way. It's like, made it. it's like you're making it. Good job, Heidi. One day you'll find a man, I'm sure. <laughs> Gigi Good walks into the workroom and I was shook. Like I've never seen a pirate without a booty. Do you see Widow Von Du and I? 
bitch, we looked at her like we were the evil stepsisters and like we were hungry, about to eat her. We have Crystal walking in the workroom. She looks absolutely perfect for a 10 year old's birthday party. Now we're on to the mini challenge. We had to prepare fashion looks for the runway, spring and fall. Gotta tip my hat to Miss Heidi. She's wearing that ornation looking thing on her head, a traffic cone, if you will. Honey, it fell off because traffic cones belong in the street, bitch. My favorite fall look is Nikki Doll. Honey, my sis is turning it out. Also, Gigi's was good too. I can't believe her mom made her a BDSM outfit. <laughs> that was a good, that's good parenting right there. <laughs> Oh, and honey, Crystal's Freddy Cougar look kills. Freddy Cougar. Cougar, oh like a cougar, like a Freddy, but she's a cougar. I, I wanna see that show, that was good. Freddy Cougar, I say it right this time? Freddy Cougar. Cougar? Okay, listen honey, we have the maxi challenge. We are being asked to write a verse for a song called I'm That Bitch. And the guest judge is Miss Nicki Minaj. Widow was the best in the whole challenge. When she did that back bend, girl, I felt every vertebrae in my body crack. My asthmatic ass was out of breath from just putting my hand in the air. <laughs> and now it's time for the runway walks and the category is Sparkle Dazzle. And here we are on the main stage for the first time and honey, let me tell you, just like Trade on Grinder, it is much smaller than it looks in the pictures. One of my favorite looks on the runway was Miss Crystal Method. T right here. Did you know that from the Nicki Minaj look to the runway, we only had 30 minutes to change and this girl took off all of her makeup, repainted herself red and came out and served the gig. I was gagged. It took me 30 minutes to just apply glitter on my cheek and my lip. Jackie Cox. It took 12 years to finally get a bearded queen on the show. <laughs> I love you sis. It's time for the judges' critiques. Main focus is on Miss Heidi in the closet because she had an allergic reaction the night before. Oh, kale no, sis. You cannot have an allergic reaction to kale. <laughs> Miss Michelle Visage told me that my lyrics didn't really say much about myself. Nicki Minaj said it was great because I was cocky, optimistic, I'll be running the game, I'm a true queen bee. I like to agree with Nicki Minaj. Also, did you see Michelle's face when she did that? <laughs> when Nicki interrupted her, she's like, what the gag is, is that there's only two girls on that stage, Widow and Gigi. Is one of them gonna go home? Nah, girl, they are the top two of the week, but only one can be a winner. So they have to lip sync. Ends up that Widow won. You know, girl, it was amazing. Did you see Widow splatting and gat kind of gatting all over there with all the tricks that Widow was turning? I'm glad Gigi was wearing a helmet. <laughs> And that's it for the episode, and here we are at Britta's Splash Zone. Every single week, I'm going to answer a question from fans from social media. We have a question from a fan, and it is, is there anything the judges said that was edited out? Yes, actually there was. Um, as you know, a big part of the episode was Miss Heidi in the closet coming for Nicki Minaj because she talked about her face looking bad, but little did you know that Miss Nicki Minaj said that she wanted to be my best friend because I just emulated so much joy on that stage. And Nicki Minaj, I'm here to tell you that I'm still waiting for you to follow me on Instagram, sis. Let's go get margaritas. That's why I'll spit rhymes with you, bitch. All right, honey, well, that was it for this episode. You better tune in tomorrow to RuPaul's Drag Race on VH1 at 8 p.m. And honey, we're gonna see what happens. I'll be breaking down every episode every week. We'll see you next time. <laughs> yes, we got to know our next guest during the very first season of Love & Hip Hop. She has since grown to be an iconic, multi-hyphenate human being. Executive producer, skincare mogul, prison reform activist, philanthropist, and the list goes on and on and on. Please give it up for Yandy Smith, y'all. <laughs> Okay, now I have to say. That was an introduction. Okay, I, I mean, you are all those things. <laughs> and I walked into the green room and this outfit, I said, oh girl, I want one in a super, super double, triple XL, all right? <laughs> you look incredible. I don't know if you could give me a little bit of that booty. Oh, I'm fine. Listen, just go to Chipotle, girl, get you a little barbacoa. <laughs> In about three months, you'll be set, all right? <laughs> How are you doing, my dear? I feel so good. Yeah. I love being here. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I love this backdrop. Thank you, Ikea, Ikea. Thank <laughs> you so much. This is what we call um, a husha fashion. Oh, oh uh -huh. okay. You, you know your Ikea, you, you can never pronounce any of the names. Nothing, of the nothing I'm like, at somebody all. put this boobity blobble together, please? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so 
No, watch I Love and Hip Hop. I've seen a lot of the seasons. A lot of the people are never from those towns, but you are a born and raised New Yorker. I am born and raised New Yorker. Yeah. I'm a Harlem girl. Harlem. Yeah. Oh, I live in Harlem now. You do. So yeah. I started, I grew up on 125th Street between Amsterdam and Broadway. Oh, you like a real, real, real I'm New a, Yorker. We can call it a Harlem girl. I can call it a project girl, but <laughs> yeah, I grew up right in Grand Projects. Um, yeah. So I, I, I love Harlem so much. See, I'm I, still there all the time. So I used to go to, I used to do like a little after school choir up there. And, but this is what, when I was in sixth, seventh, eighth grade. So I, remember, I know Harlem when Harlem was not what it is now, when people weren't walking around with strollers and everything. Harlem was dangerous. Yeah, honey. and they had the blankets on the street. Everybody selling grandma shoes. Yeah, grandma, grandma shoes. Old, uh -huh. Grandma old rotary phone. <laughs> Grandpa's old handkerchief but is then, not still on but it. But then the police come, so they pull one string and the whole bag just becomes like a pin. You're like, how did that happen? It's like, Real quick. Whoop, whoop. And you know, going, and then they walk off, like nothing this. ever happened, nothing ever happened. Oh, yes. <laughs> but we can't just give over the fact that you sing. Y'all heard that, 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 that um, Ooh, you sing? I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> Ooh, I gotta get you in the studio. I mean, can you get me on the next season of Love and Hip Hop? Hello. I'm down. Well, you gotta talk about it. Oh, I will be, I'll give them some good drama, too. Ooh, I, I want you on my side. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, definitely. definitely. <laughs> I, I will never be Kimbella, okay? Never. Because <laughs> we're gonna talk about it a little bit later. Okay. And uh, you also, you are, you are a Howard University grad. I People am. People don't know that about you. I am. Oh my gosh, I scream it to the top of the hill. It took, yeah. it took a whole lot. It took uh, a whole so, lot out of yeah. me, a whole lot of money. Yes. And um, a whole lot of studying. Yeah. Howard was the best. It, it, it was. It was an experience that I would recommend for any young person that really wants to get in tune with their identity, get real good education, and then just be among some of the most beautifully educated people, black yeah. and brown people black that you'll ever people. be around. It was an amazing experience. In case you guys don't know, um, Howard University is a HBCU, historically black university. Yes. And um, were you were you were you a soror were you are you a sorority girl? No, I almost was a sorority girl. AKA. Um, AKA. I knew it, of course, girl, AKA. Uh -huh. Yeah, Pink but some green. crazy stuff happened and um, I, I didn't go all the way through with it. Okay. I, I almost did FIA, but I was like, this is, they wanted me to like sacrifice a goat. I yes, and that. your firstborn child. And you're like, I'm, like, I'm not doing that. We'll, we'll say that. I'm joking. We don't need any of them coming. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm we, kidding. It's we a joke. We love the divine. Uh, we love the divine. Okay. everything. <laughs> and <laughs> so back to loving hip hop. So. You were a producer first, mm -hmm. and then you had a cameo season one. Mm -hmm. And what was so people? You were like you were instrumental in forming love and hip hop. Yeah, and absolutely. How did that go? How do you? You know what? It started out as a show. Uh, at the time, I was managing Jim Jones, uh -huh. and uh, his family I thought were so entertaining. From his mom, his sister, everybody in that whole family is entertaining. Uh -huh. So I was like, I just want to put a camera on you guys and just see what happens. I met an executive over at VH1, and I followed up with a meeting, and I came, you know, we don't just come, we had an opportunity, we didn't just come to a meeting. I came to a meeting with my whole rollout, my whole write-up, my video uh, presentation. Love that. And um, it started out, and it was called Keeping Up With The Joneses. That was the first deal Okay, I no got. shade. Ain't nobody trying to watch Jim Jones for half an hour. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> I mean, maybe you know the family, you know, but I'm like, Jim Jones, I'm trying to watch him for a half well, an hour. Well, bro. Jim wasn't trying to have himself watch for a whole half an hour or hour either. He was like, okay, this is too much. The cameras are too intrusive. Uh -huh. So um, I went to Mona and I was like, Mona, I don't want to lose my deal with VH1. I need your help. So she came on board, had an amazing idea, which now turned into Love and Hip Hop. Yeah. And um, we joined forces and that, boom. Ten years later. Ten years later. Love and Hip Hop is still here. Love and Hip Hop. On and popping. So that means that means you getting the checks from Love and Hip Hop, Miami, Atlanta, <laughs> is Hollywood. Is that what that means? Uh huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. No. Uh huh. I love that girl. That's what that bitch, a motherfucking mogul. Okay, y'all. <laughs> um, and I have to say, I feel like okay, so. We see a whole season of Love and Hip Hop, and I feel like the next season comes on, and there's so much drama that happened. Like, it almost seems fabricated. I'm not gonna lie, but I guess I. It, see, this is the thing. People th Let me tell you something. I'll just talk about me personally. Yeah. If I could write off my son not having to have kidney surgery at two months, I would. That, yeah. that showed on the show. Yeah. If I could write off the feds come and knock on my door and look for my yeah. husband, I could write that. I would write that out of my script. Yeah. If I could write out, you know, me having to be a single mother for the past four years, yeah. I would write that out of my script. Yeah. You can look at my life and know that it's not fabricated. Yeah. Because there's so many things that... I would not have had, I would not have chose yeah. for this to be my story. Yeah. Um, what it is is situational. Can y'all keep it down? Yeah, I'm, I know someone is out there sick or possibly even dying. Yeah, we're but trying to we're show having an here. interview here. Anyway. Um, gosh, <laughs> these sirens in New York, you don't hear this in the fancy area. Okay? You know? I don't think they have these type of sirens in Hollywood. Or in Harlem. 
Or, no, uh, yeah, they got him there. <laughs> well, speaking of, speaking of your husband, so is Mendici, is, is he out? He's home. He's home. He is home. He is home, and he he's at home with you, or the halfway house Oh, situation? halfway house. Halfway house. Yes, halfway so, house right now until April. So what does that mean, that he can come, he's see you on the he, weekend? Yeah, he can come home on the weekends, he can get passes to come out uh -huh. and work and do things like that. But yes, he's they, they are actively trying to re- and integrate him into family and society. Yeah. So, so I have, so when, as your husband was away, five years? Five years collectively. Collectively. He came home in between. Right. And then you had to go back. So did you, was it ever a point you're like, I need to leave? Are you like, I am a ride or die. I love this man. Like, what, what was your mindset? I went through every single emotion you could possibly think of. Yeah. Um, but the thing that kept me here, I always felt like, this is the man that I've always been head over heels in love with. From the moment I saw him in Miami, randomly while I was working, I was like, who that? Who's that? I'm gonna marry that man. See, I've had that moment, but none of them felt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I worked for that one, honey. <laughs> um, but then I also always felt like this is a drop in the bucket in the lifetime I told him that I would spend with him. Yeah. You know, I, I knew that there was an end date. You yeah. know, some people lose their loved ones to death. Yeah. This wasn't a death sentence. Yeah. So I knew that this was just a drop in the bucket for the lifetime we decided to spend with each other. Mm -hmm. And I said, Andy, if you can do this, you can do anything. Yeah. So um, I did it. Yeah. I and did now, it. And I'm and still now. here and we're still standing. So. And he's home. And he's home. Yeah. Yeah. I, and he's an amazing dad. So he loves taking the babies to school. He loves picking them up and tucking them in. My babies now do not want to sleep anywhere but with dad on okay. the weekends. Like, one is on top of his head, <laughs> one's leg is in his foot, in his yeah, mouth. So, you know, it's, it's, it's good. And, and we've waited a long time for this to be the case, especially because what he was sentenced for was for when, before we had children, before yeah. we were even together. Yeah. So we were all kind of paying the price for a mistake he made in his young years. Yeah. And um, it just feels good to have my family back together. I've I cried, that. I've prayed, I've been in pain, been struggling, you know, emotionally with yeah. this. And now to have my family back, it just feels like a dream come true. I love that, yeah. That's Thank you. I think of your family, you have, you know, you've been a big advocate for foster children because you now have your your daughter Infinity. Yes. And 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 how so you had two kids and you and you did the work with the with uh, my mentorship program. Yeah, the mentorship EGL program. EGL put, yeah. Uh -huh. EGL put. And mm -hmm. so how did that transition from you work there? You're like, oh, you you met this young lady yes. and you wanted her to be part of your life forever. Yeah. So I run a mentorship program. It's called EGL Puds. It stands for Partners Uplifting Our Daughters and Sons. And um, we have so many babies that come through our program, so many teens, I call them my babies. And um, this particular young lady just was incredible. She always stood out. And um, we had something that we did for foster children around the city. I met her when she was in seventh grade, mm. never knew that she was in foster care. And um, one day she just opened up when we had some other girls there and she just started crying. And I'm like, girl, why are you crying? I had her there kind of to, you know, speak to the other girls. And she was like, you know, I just, I never talk about this, but I've been in foster care. And she talked about some of her struggles and she had us all in the room crying because this is a straight A student. This is, yeah. you know, top in the city basketball player. Work. And someone that just has an amazing personality that defies, you know, being stereotyped as a foster child, yeah. you know? And, and it's so funny that we're having this conversation because people are so harsh. I just got finished checking a, I'll leave the B-I-T-C-H for someone else to finish. Kim Bella. <laughs> I just got finished checking a. Uh-huh. For even speak, don't first of all don't call her a foster child. Like what's it? They, like what's up with that foster girl? Or even uh, you don't got time because you too busy. How are you gonna do? Don't speak on my family, but don't speak on her because if you understand the survival, the resilience, and the tenacity of this young girl, like, you're not even worthy to speak her, her name. name. You understand Absolutely, what I'm saying? Yeah. You're not even worthy to say anything about her. So that's I'll digress. Uh -huh. um, one day she just called me and said, I can't take it anymore. I, I can't do this. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, oh, you're not going to be able to get in touch with me because I'm going to have to give them Infinity, my... Infinity, your daughter. Yeah, I'm going to have to give them my phone back and you might not... And I was like, I'm coming to get you right now. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm coming to get you. And um, from there, I thought she was going to be there for the afternoon and then maybe the overnight, then maybe the weekend. And, then, and it turned into my forever, so... I love that. I love that. Yeah. There's so many foster kids out there that don't have a home, have no hope. Yeah. And they give this young lady hope. So but, for the, let me catch y'all up. Kim Bella is a shady... Is, a, is um, a woman on Love and Hip Hop, <laughs> and 
her, she tried to accuse you of, 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 of using Infinity for, as a storyline on the show and just saying, so very derogatory and not great, especially being another black woman, yeah. uh, a woman of color. Like to her to put this young lady down who is who is who, who is going through her situation. It oh was my so gross. It was it was disgusting. And I'm a forgiving person, you know. And I just felt like you you were ill advised and you yeah. didn't think that's not something you even use for a storyline. Yeah. Even if you thought that you felt like Yandy don't have time for this. What is she doing? Call me on the side. Have a conversation with someone. Have a yeah. conversation with me. Like don't play with a child's life. Whatever, but you never go publicly, nationally, and put that out there right. simply because this child can hear it. Yeah, she and can she hear it. And she will hear it. And she will hear it. She's on Instagram. She, you exactly. Know, they're gonna. She's in high school. They're gonna tell her what's mm -hmm. happening. So I was heartbroken, not for me, but I was heartbroken for her. First of all, I don't need to prove what I'm doing. If I did it for a day, yeah. that was more than you did. Yeah. If I did yeah. it for three days, that was more than anyone else. Yeah. But you don't have the right to hurt a child's feeling. Yeah. Or you don't even have a right to make a child ch question me. Yeah. Like, this is your best friend or your ex-best friend. Is she right? Are you going to yeah. throw me away because yeah. you're too busy? Ugh. Oh, imagine. So th imagine what it was like in my household having to explain that. Ugh. Oh, trash. You know? Yeah. So it, it, it has been... You know what, that was just, again, that was a drop in the bucket of a lifetime we have. And that that was nothing. We are so far past that. We're preparing for prom season for right prom. now. prom, oh God. See, I, did, did, you, did you go to, I didn't go to my prom. Did you go to your prom? I went to two proms, yeah. Two proms. But I wasn't, I didn't have a, a cleavage down here. I didn't have splits Yeah, it's so different. Now, let me say, I girls have, have like, showing here. they're like custom gowns. And they're, I mean, it's, it's the, I want one gown. I, I want one of the dresses. Here. Well, I said to her, I said, listen, you know, we're going to do one of these custom made dresses. I mean, you got your legs out, you know, you got this all exposed up here. We can do that, but I'm going to go with you. <laughs> you cannot go with her. <laughs> no, no you cannot go with her, Andy. I imagine your mom. I am a be... cool mom, okay? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if Andy showed up, I'm like, yeah, here we are. I'm like, I am a cool mom, but I'm like, I want to protect her. I want her to be a baby for a little bit longer. This was too quick for me. Like, yeah. she goes to college, college this in year. College in August, yeah. And this year, she's lived, living in a dorm already to prepare. She, she's an honor student, so they put they have them go to the dorms and stay there. Ooh, so come I'm on, just, 2020. So I'm just I mean, I wasn't like, honest, so I wouldn't know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Neither was I. I got in a hour by the skin of my chinny chin chin. <laughs> but um, I'm just like, this is happening too fast. Too fast, yeah. It's too fast. I feel like I just got her in my home. Yeah. I just really made her part of the family last year. And now she's going to leave me and go to college. I so. mean, but is, is she curious about all the other? Because now you have your skincare line out, too. Oh, I'm please. Sure. She's a whole Yale skincare ambassador by her choice. By her. She started using it. She had, um, like, bad acne when she came to live with us. And now her face is completely clear. Use, she, you, using Yale? Yes, using Yale. Okay, now talk to us about the skincare line. Because oh I see, God. again, all shades, all colors, oh, all creeds, absolutely. everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell us so, about Yale. So Yale skincare is an all-natural, plant-based skincare line that I created about four years ago. And I created it because from student shooting the show, I had all these crazy things happen. I had dark spots, yeah. hyperpigmentation, and I, my nose was peeling here, but I was oily over here. I'm like, Sephora, help me out. I need help. Your girl needs help. And then they, then they try to tell your moisturizer for $395. They're like, well, I had 20. What this are we going to do? The, this was the problem. <laughs> you know? So when I finished, when they threw everything in the bed, the eye cream, the toner, the serum, it was $489. That is crazy. And they're like, oh, air. and that's your 30-day supply. <laughs> I was like, there is no way the average woman could afford Thing. Yeah. So I was like, Ugh. so I called one of my friends, is a master esthetician, and I was like, okay, I need you to put some people together. I need a chemist. I want to create an all green natural um, skincare line, and I want it to be fierce. It turned my first product was fierce, and that was in a bad way. I had to throw out the whole entire line. Uh -huh. um, it didn't work. Like, Waste, who cut the cheese in here, girl? Wasted <laughs> a bunch of money. Uh huh. And then we got it right. Good work. We got it right, and we tested it for some time. It's been out for two years. It makes two years in March, and we have cleared a million dollars already. Word. So I'm excited. <laughs> Can I be a partner? We were like, we just want to do $100,000. Uh -huh. But we have cleared in our second year over a million. I love that. Well, I mean, I, I would love to demo some products for you. and like. I, you know. I already told you. Okay. Now, the thing about Yell, it's about cleansing your face and cleansing your spirit. Oh. So if you know me, if you Oh, my I, spirit is toxic, girl. We ain't gonna clean no. that. No. 
alone. <laughs> but it's all about having a good time while you're washing your face. Uh -huh. So we do these Potter Room pop-ups. That's what I call them. Potter so Room pop-ups. Potter okay. Room pop-ups. So I'm going to pop up on you. Yeah. So you can pop up on me in my bathroom. Uh-huh. And we put on a, whatever your favorite song I think yours is, is better because I'm, I'm in a one-bedroom apartment in Harlem, girl. Yeah. It's about this much space So you come to my house. Okay, I'm going over when here. I say we get in front of the mirror and while we wash on our face, we jamming. We got to put the shoulders in. <laughs> I like, uh, we play the music. Uh, we be get, there we go. All while washing our face. Oh, I Sarah, love that. Moisturizer. Because I'm a kid. What's up with like skincare? And Somebody treat, said go, Yandy. I'm <laughs> in. <laughs> treat me like a toddler. I want like the airplane like, no, here we go, Monet. I want to be like spoon fed my But that's skincare, exactly what we do. That's what okay. we do. We, we tell you. So what I do is I talk to you about like what your issues are. Dry skin, oily skin, hyperpigmentation. And then yes, I'll talk yes, you yes. through which products you need. Okay. So, yeah, yes, we'll do it. definitely look up yellowskincare.com. Uh -huh. Shameless plug. <laughs> um, but, yeah, for sure, we have something for you, and I can't wait to do a pot room pop-up. Really cute, really cute. Yes. And it talks about, talks about your, your this new movie, Nine Days. Oh, my so God. So you and, and your, 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 your EP movies now, like, you you do whatever, you I literally are doing it. everything. Yes, so my company, Manta Production, we executive produced Nine Days. The but, concept is a little freaky. <laughs> I'm a little, can you tell, it's a little. It's like the reverse of being born. Instead of, I mean, the reverse of dying. So it's, it's people right before you're born, it's in essence like God saying, you have the right to enter the world, you have the right to enter the world, but you have to fight for that right to enter the world. And you have to prove that you can, you have a worthy place to be born into this space. Um, so it's amazing. It's very like... We have Winston Dukes is our star. Has um, they beat. The dad from Us. Y'all saw Us, him. He yes, is, yes. He's yes, really yes. funny. He is. Bill Scott's guy, um, Benedict Wong. So there The girl I, from Deadpool. Yes, The black yes, girl. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. She's in the two girl. So yeah. there are... It, it's oh. a lot of fun things happening and... and the movie aesthetically is just beautiful. Yeah, it's very beautiful. And, well um, you know, there's, we officially sold it. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it. Oh, no. It was in Variety. So. I was like, damn. I was like, you heard it here first? <laughs> you heard it here first? That's in Variety. <laughs> so, you know what? Go look up Nine Days. Yeah, yeah. Go it's do that. Interesting. Yeah. And make sure you come see it. it, it it's, you guys will really enjoy it. It's one of those films that's like, oh, yeah, this is Emmy bound. Well, speaking of Nine Days, this has nothing to do with that, but we're going to play a game. <laughs> oh. Let me sip on Segway. something. So we're going to play a game called Love and Hip Who. One of us has to get the other to guess which influential woman of hip hop is on our card. Okay. So it's like hip hop, we can't say the other name because of all rights reserved, the bullshit, but y'all know what game it is, all right? So we're gonna put 30 seconds on the clock, Love and, and you guys, who? yeah. Do you want to go first, or, or should I go first, or do you want to give me clues first? Or oh, I'm, I'm already cheating with you. I'll, uh, I'll go first, so you can so you can give me clues. Okay. Okay. Let's put 30 seconds on the clock, and don't don't help her. No cheating. Okay, I'm very competitive. Okay. okay wait, wait, wait. All right. 30 seconds. Go. Poom. Um. Smell good. Perfume. Erica Badu. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um. Um. This is shady. Shoop, shoop, baby. Salt and pepper? Shoop, yep. Word! <laughs> no! Um. Cause I'm the one of the Uh, Nicki Minaj. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, the miseducation of. Lauren Hill. There you go. Yo, you're good. Um. Seven, 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 you sing too? Why am I telling myself? I'm not saying the words because I know you probably can't clear that. Carl Thomas? No, it's a woman. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm going there. Mary J. Blige. There you go. Okay, and 30, 30 seconds is up. But I got one, two, three, four. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Hey. I got four. Mary J. Mary what J. What was that first song you were singing? I, da, uh. da, da. Last seven years. Oh, seven years. Oh, Mary, Mary J. Blige be doing. Didn't she do it? Besides the kids, I also have her nothing life. to show. Wait, the Mary J. Mine. Oh no, you gotta and you gotta do the. Uh. <laughs> you gotta. You, well, you, all I had to do was that, and you would have known. Oh who yeah, you said that. I know. I didn't know if we were allowed to stand up with the oh, camera. Oh yeah, girl, works. this is physical. I didn't want to get the cameramen. You know. This is okay. your, this is your staff. My go. Yeah, here we go. All right. Oh. Wait, yeah. let, me, let me get some liquor up in it. You better get this right, because this is my sister. Uh-huh. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm pacing myself. No, I have to get this right. Yeah, I, I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to give you clues. I'm going to give you clues. You got to get it right. Give me clues. Let me try to guess. But right. let me mix it up. I'm going to mix it up, so okay. I don't know yet. Well, let me fix my shoe, because, you know, they like to come in the comments. <laughs> 
Did y'all see Monet's fucking shoe was untied? What an unf unprofessional bitch. I'm oh, like, okay. gosh. And they yeah. really be that serious. Oh, that serious, oh, yeah, too. Honey. Also, I like the fact that you're drinking. Sometimes the guests are like, I don't want to drink today. I'm like, oh, no. Whack boob. Let me tell you something. On YouTube, you can have a whole million dollar YouTube channel just going like this. Hello? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> can we do that in the powder room kiki session? <laughs> Where's my camera? <laughs> oh my gosh, you can make money off YouTube doing anything. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, here go. we go. 30 seconds on the clock. Come on now, you better work. I got you, I got you. Starting now. Oh, you little bitch, you can't fuck with me if it's you party, want. It's yeah, uh -huh. Oh, she, she was, y'all were on there together. Did you yeah, like her on the yeah, show? Yes, yeah, yes, she was so funny. She was hilarious. Oh, they didn't let her shoot together much, but okay. she was cool. Um, Pass. I'll... What the hell? You can't pass? Yes, I'm I can. Losing. Oh, okay. you are? <laughs> oh, um, my lip gloss is popping. My lip gloss is cool. I understand in my locker, all of them will be jocking. What you know about me? What you know? Um, what you know about? What you, what you know about bow me? Wow. What you know about me, little mama? Yeah, little mama. <laughs> okay. That's not her. Is this her? Yeah, that is. I think the time is up, but we'll do the No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> it's like taking you too long. OK, so back in the day, you, uh, she, she, she wanted the, she's one of the, like, the matriarchs of hip hop. Missy Elliott. No, no. <laughs> with, 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 with Queen Latifah back then. Um, not, uh, MC Light? Yes, 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 yes. OK. OK. Uh, who the fuck is that? <laughs> OK, is this? All, on vacation, all white people go here and they get their hair braided um, with the different islands. Ghana, Africa, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no! Hair braided. In, 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 in the Caribbean. This is a person? But their names sound like it. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Bahama. Who the hell is that? Yeah, I don't know. Bahamadia. I'm like, what an Atala Perry we is that? We love you, Bahamadia. Bahama, you're so fierce. You're, you're an amazing. icon, and we love you so much. They have your name spelled wrong on the cue card. Yeah, we love you, Bahama. We you're do. amazing. Thank you, you so much for your, all your contributions your to hip hop. Have, Thank you. Have definitely contributed so much. Uh huh. We love you. All three of them. Okay, that's it. You lost. I, you were supposed to get here. I I know. I, is it worth it? Let me I would have got that it. right I away. Think, think, you know, I worked with Missy for years. Did, her new, have you seen the video with what? her doing the fucking everything, jump rope with the hair? Everything. everything. Oh, man. I know. You took too long. So you won by default. <laughs> you won by default. You was like, um, <laughs> pass. It wasn't just like, pass. It was like, Ah, y'all make some for Yanny Smith, yes. <laughs> to find out more about Yanny's mentorship program, visit eglpd.com and keep your eyes peeled for her film, Nine Days, coming out to a screen near you yes. soon. Yes, Yanny Smith! <laughs> now, before we go, I'm giving out our tip of the week. That's Jesus emptying out his pockets. Oh. And my tip this week goes to Bad Bunny, whose performance on The Tonight Show paid tribute to Alexa Negron Luciano, a trans woman who was killed after using a woman's restroom in Puerto Rico last month. When the story broke, news outlets referred to her as a man in a skirt, and in his performance, Bad Bunny wore a skirt and a shirt that translates to, they killed Alexa, not a man in a skirt. We applaud any straight cis man like Bad Bunny, who stands in the face of violence against trans women of color. And our condolences go out to the friends and family of Alexa. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Bad Bunny. We love that shit here. Yes. Tune in next time, and remember to always keep your currency in check.